Hi guys, this is Creative Cuts, a channel where I build, paint and create things. I recently got asked by a viewer to do a video on foliage and flocks, as this can be an area that is quite confusing if you're new to the topic. I thought the best way to go about this is to go through some of the products that I use to make my dioramas and to build something nice and simple that looks great. So first off, foliage for dioramas comes in all kinds of shapes, sizes, colours and everything in between. Now before I begin, I want to make clear that you by no means need all of this to get started. I often use a little bit of something and then save it for another project and then over time have built up a nice little selection. So while some of the products may seem expensive to begin with, in the long run they're actually quite good value for money. One of the first things I remember buying was something called reindeer moss. This is actually a preserved kind of lichen. It has been dyed and you can pick up a bag in various colours for pretty cheap. I like to use this stuff for overgrown vines but it's also a great way to quickly add foliage to models and dioramas for very little effort. I'll also include some static grasses in this guide as I often use grass to create trees or plants but more on that later. Static grass is a great way to add grass to any scene. It comes in a variety of lengths and colours depending on the effect you want to achieve. This really fine stuff I actually use for moss as it has a lovely texture. If you're not sure what to get, sometimes companies will do a kind of combo pack. Another quick off the shelf way of creating foliage is some of this foliage from Woodland Scenics. It is some polyfiber with some foam flock already attached. Just pull some off and you have instant leafy looking scale shrubs. Now there are plenty of guides how to make your own flock online so I won't do that here but I made some and keep it in this little jar ready for use. A little messy but great if you're working on a budget. Now speaking of flocks, these generally come in two different types. One's made from foam and one's made from sawdust or similar. Both have their uses. This foam stuff is great for quickly adding tree foliage or dense growth and has a light and fluffy texture. Sawdust based flocks on the other hand are generally a bit finer and can have all kinds of applications from leaf cover depending on the scale you are working on, fine moss and also coarser stuff for a more rough looking texture. Some of these I will never use in their original state because of the crazy colours, but I also find this works great for some small stones or general ground litter. As I touched on before, I like the ones with a little colour variation in them to give them a more natural look. So let's quickly see how you can use flock to make some foliage. A great simple way to make trees is to use sea foam. These are dried plants that look like mini trees. This can be a little expensive, but I bought a box of offcuts online for relatively cheap and I have to say it really goes a long way. All you do is take a small branch, spray it with some spray glue, and then sprinkle some flock over the top. You might need a few layers of this if you want some dense trees. But as you can see, with very little effort, you achieve amazing realistic results in a very short time. You can also get flocks in all manner of colours. Here I have a sample pack with purple, red, yellow and pink flocks. These are great to make flowers with. Same process as the tree, just dip the ends of your grass in some glue and sprinkle your flower flock on. Another way to get simple plant life into your scene is to use clump foliage. This is basically big clumps of foam flock that hasn't been broken up into little pieces so you can grab some straight out the packet and use it as small bushes. I also have a packet of polyfiber. This is basically thin fibers that you can pull apart and can be used as hanging vines. You can buy all manner of small leaves for trees, but the best I've found for fallen leaves are these little guys. A few here and there can really bring a scene to life. A great little discovery I made 
was this product called horsehair. It has been rubberized with latex and gives a wonderful coarse twisted mess of material, great for brambles and forest undergrowth. With a little paint and some flock on top, they're good to go. Another option is plastic plants. I always get sidetracked in the pet shop or the garden center and end up looking at their selection of aquarium plants. You can easily find some great shapes and designs in a range of colors. Some of the plastics can be a little greasy straight out the packet, so I recommend washing them in some soapy water and then priming them before painting. Some fake plastic plants can look really realistic too. The battle is getting ones that look good in a small scale. I found that sometimes with a little trimming, these can look really good. Okay, well, that's all well and good. Lots of different products to choose from, but let's put some of them to practical use. A little forest clearing that could be adapted to many settings and could also form the basis of some really sweet terrain for tabletop games. First I will make some simple pine trees. I didn't have any round balsa wood dolls but with a bit of shaving I will make this square peg fit in a round hole so to speak. Balsa wood is great for this as it cuts very easily. Take care when using a sharp knife as accidents can happen. I carved these lengths into little magic wands, tapered at one end to form the top of the tree. Next to add some bark and texture to the tree trunks, I take some coarse flock. The colour doesn't matter really, as I will paint over these anyway. With some spray glue I give the trunks a quick spray and then sprinkle the flock over the top. Again this may take a couple of layers depending on how rough you want your bark to be. Then I take some thin garden wire and cut this into short lengths. These will form the branches. Cut loads as you will be surprised at how many branches you will need to make a realistic looking tree. Before attaching the branches, I give the trunk a quick spray of brown with my airbrush. You can use a spray can for this too. In order to attach the branches, I take some pliers and grab the wire near the end. Dip it in a bit of super glue and just push the branches straight into the balsa wood. This takes a little time, but once you get into a rhythm, it can go quite fast. Once all the branches are attached, I give them a bit of a bend and trim them to shape. I then take some six mil static grass and turn the tree upside down. I give it a spray of glue and then slowly sprinkle the grass onto branches. At first, most of the grass will fall through the gaps, but the more you repeat the process, the more fibers will stick to the branches. Again, color is irrelevant at this stage as everything will be painted, so you can use up some grass that you don't really like the look of. Next, I take an old paintbrush and push some of the grass fibers down and carefully remove any grass that's gotten attached to the trunk. I then paint everything brown. In this case, some burnt sienna from Golden Acrylics. Once dry, I then take some shorter lengths of grass, I think two or four mil in this case, and give the branches a dusting from above. Again, the color can be shifted so I use some horrible grass that's very shiny and I think came free with another purchase. I keep adding grass fibers until I'm happy with the density of foliage. I then touch up the color again, a little brown from underneath. And then a deep green from above. And lastly, I finish off the trees with a touch of a lighter green just to add some highlights to the ends of the branches. And if you want to learn more about creating trees, then I would like to take a moment to thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who loves learning and wants to explore their creativity and learn new skills. They have a premium membership which allows you unlimited access to courses covering a really wide range of topics from photography or painting 
to productivity and marketing, to name only a few. I found that drawing something can really help you understand its form as you begin to distill a shape into its constituent parts. To help me with this project, I took the class, painting trees with watercolours, learn to paint 50 plus types of trees by Shannon Subhan. Full of great tips and really gets you to think about the type of tree you're trying to create. So head over to Skillshare by clicking the link below and because they are sponsoring this video today, the first thousand people to use the link in my description box or my code will get one month free trial of Skillshare and after that it's very cheap to start your premium membership. Thank you to Skillshare for supporting the channel and sponsoring this video. While all this was drying, I quickly made up a base, just some scrap wood and some modeling compound to make some basic hills and then primed black. I mix up some homemade ground texture using some PVA glue, a little water and some coarse garden soil with a few bits of bark thrown in for good measure. I add a little green and brown paint to get a nice muddy green color and spread this over my base. Next I add my trees to the scene. I inserted a piece of wire to the base of each trunk so it's easy to push them into place. And while my ground texture is still wet, I sprinkle some neat soil around the bases of the trees and also in random places just to give a bit of natural variation. Next I add some thinned PVA to areas where I want to apply some grass. I load up my static grass applicator with some 2mm grass, just to get a nice base from which to work from. Attaching the trees helped me visualise the composition of the scene, but also very much got in the way of applying the grass. I carefully removed them to access those hard to reach places. I added some more passes of longer static grass in various colours and pushed all this around a bit with an old paintbrush. This helps break up the uniform look of the static grass and gives you something that feels very natural. I use clean air from my airbrush to blow away any grass from the areas without glue and then tapped off any remaining excess. Next I take some muddy ground from AK Interactive. This is a pre-made ground texture, similar to the one I made earlier, and add this to my scene to create a sort of muddy bog. In order to cross this obstacle, I created a quick bridge made from some coffee sticks glued together and painted brown and then glued this onto the base. Then going back to some of the products I mentioned earlier in this video, I add some basic plant life, some clump foliage for some small bushes, then I make some slightly larger bushes in a in a very similar way I showed earlier in this video. Some sea foam sprayed with glue and then some flock added on top. I've used the foam based flock here as I wanted a denser looking bush. I make a small hole in the base where I want my bush and then with a little dot of super glue attach the bushes using some angled tweezers. Next I Make some brambles by pulling off little chunks of horsehair and spraying these brown. Then I gave them a quick coat of spray glue and sprinkled some sawdust based flock for leaves. The sawdust based flock is much finer in nature than the foam stuff and represents individual small leaves rather than dense foliage. I make up a few at a time and anything I don't use for this build, I will save for another time. I add these to the model with a little super glue on the underside. I 
also found some pre-made bushes left over from previous project and also attached these. For some fallen pine needles, I take some cocoa fiber. I got this from the garden center sold as a lining for hanging baskets. I cut a piece off and just pull it apart and then cut this into little lengths. With a little PVA, I glue these around the bases of the trees. I add in some moss effect from Dirty Down to my bridge to give it some age and character and make it look like it's been there for a while. And finally, I mix up a little epoxy resin and lightly drip this onto the mud to make some puddles where water may have built up. I hope this has given you all a basic understanding of how some foliage products can be used. Now you certainly don't need to use them in the way they're intended. And with a little creative thinking and some trial and error, you can come up with some really nice alternative ways to use these products to make your scene burst into life. If you have enjoyed this video, you can let YouTube know by hitting the like button. You can stay up to date with all the latest videos by subscribing. And let me know if you find this kind of video useful in the comments below. Also, this video came as a request from a viewer. So if there are any areas or topics that you'd like me to cover in more detail, then again, let me know in the comments section. Thank you for joining me today, and I will see you in the next video. Enjoy.